Church in the 21st Century Center presents God Pods, hosted by C21 Director and Professor of Theology, Thomas Groom. Hello and Easter greetings from Boston College and our Church in the 21st Century Center. My conversation partner for this God Pod is Professor Michael J. Naughton. Professor Naughton holds the Evelyn and Robert Ferris Chair of Physics here at Boston College and has been the Administrative Chair of our Physics Department for some 12 years now. Now, his area of interest has something to do, I know, with nanoscale integrated science, but after that, I'm pretty much lost. Enough to say that Professor Naughton is one of our most distinguished scholars here at Boston College, and his reputation as a physicist is literally worldwide. We're old friends, so I'll take the liberty of first name basis. So welcome, Mike, we're delighted to have you. Happy to be here. Good. Mike, tell us a little in more, I suppose, layperson's terms about your scientific research and the focus of your work and teaching here at Boston College. Certainly. We have a couple of hours for this, right? No. <laughs> we so, in, uh, very briefly, uh, you said, right, the nanoscale integrated science. It's a sort of a relatively new realm of science. Uh, what, what's old is new again of people working together from different fields. So there's many different fields I work on. I'll just mention a few of them. Uh, energy related for solar power, sort of new nanotechnologies sure. for solar energy. Uh, significant. Even, even working with people in chemistry on CO2 reduction to one of the biggest world problems we have is the uh, high increase in CO2 that we're creating. Sure. Also working with people in neuroscience on trying to develop devices that can sort of measure large numbers of neurons at once and, at once and maybe even uh, uh, be of use to neurological diseases. Sure. So and, all and from a physics viewpoint. Of course, because all the great uh, cures and uh, that have been, that have come, of course, were grounded in good science. That's where they arise from originally. So what marvelous work. Well, now, you know, the typical assumption, Mike, um, I suppose that we grew up with is that faith and science are poles apart, if not enemies, as it were. Uh, you know, the assumption one was that one is based on reason and the empirical research where the other is what? Wishful thinking or the, the superstitions of our grandparents. So what is your perspective on the relationship of science and faith? Well, I agree that science is based on reason and em empiricism and uh, experimental uh, research that tries to uh, see how the world works and, and, and how things are and what, and what they are. Uh, I never thought of science and faith or science and religion as enemies. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're not the same thing, there's no doubt, but there's, there's uncertainties, mysteries, you could say, in, in both. That they both share. And, and even some that are... are are shared of the same uncertainty. Now, literal interpretations of scripture would would say that there's contradictions. Of but, course. But I don't think yeah. rational thought leads to literal interpretation. And, and of course, as good Catholics, uh, literal interpretation has never been our problem. We have other problems. But we've never taken like the story of creation as literally true. It teaches great uh, theological and spiritual truths about God, that God is the creator and sustainer of all. But no, nobody would believe or claim anymore or, or and preach that it was all done in six days or something. Well, I'd that, like to say that no a, rational people would. Yeah. Yeah, but, but as I said, it, it's not the tendency uh, among Catholics to Correct. do that. So that uh, we, we've certainly been beyond that. Well, that's 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 marvelous. Well, I suppose let me invite you to speak a little more personally uh, about it. Like, how do you negotiate the two uh, in your own faith journey? How do you manage to be a great scientist and a person of faith? Well, it's more of a personal journey, like you said. That uh, my 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 upbringing is certainly fully within the Catholic Church, all, both parents and grandparents, um, all from Ireland. Um, and, and I went to Catholic grammar school and a Catholic high school, and it so happened to be the Brazilian college as well. But still, it's an individual choice, individual journey. Mm -hmm. And I don't really see a conflict between having faith in, that, in the realm of religion and being a great scientist. And I, and I look to a few names in history that... Uh, Address these sometimes in more deeper ways than I have, but 
Isaac Newton, if you read his religious faith, they, he was a bit of a nut, actually, uh, over, over religious. Um, but there's other major names of, of Maxwell who defined how we look at how we define light, for example, sure. was a very religious person. Even Einstein had much intelligent uh, words to say about the relationship between science and faith and religion. And uh, I could I could take inspiration from some of them. Sure. But, uh, something similar in my mind. And would I be right in thinking, Mike, in saying that that in a sense it's all ultimate mystery? And I suppose people who delve into the depths of the physical world that, that you do uh, come to recognize that there is a kind of uh, some well to say a god particle. I suppose is too strong, but that there is a mystery there. That is uh, that reflects ultimacy and transcendence. That is not simply of our own making, and uh, there's something there that's beyond both our both our faith and our science uh, is a reach ultimately for all of us. Well, I have no trouble saying that. There's many things we don't know, and we, exactly. we don't know the the ultimate of everything, and we'll strive for quite some time to continue searching. And how how you how one categorizes that is whether a search for faith or a search for the ultimate truth of science, uh, I'm not in any position to say that they're not one and the same. Sure. And I suppose that ultimate truth of science will never be uncovered or discovered in the sense there'll always be more, won't there? I would imagine there's always more. I there's think always I think more. we'll always be at the tip of the iceberg. At the fact. tip of the iceberg. And now that brings me to my next question. And of course, this is a good Ignatian perspective. Ignatius of Loyola was fond of saying that it is possible to come to see God in all things, which is why Ignatius or many Jesuits then became everything from astronomers to zoologists and zoology Absolutely, people yeah. and everything in between. And their whole sense was that, that in studying God's creation, that they were giving glory to God, just as they might be celebrating the Eucharist, that, they, that they, when the astronomer was looking to the stars, that too was given glory to God. In your own work, um, as you as you look more deeply into into the physical realities, where do you recognize uh, the mystery of God? Um, even if you might use other language, you certainly would never use that language. You wouldn't use God talk the way I do uh, in your publications. And yet, have you had a sense, maybe even a particular experience, of being a physicist? and yet being brought to awe, to reverence, to amazement, uh, to mystery. Do you have, you have, uh, sure. have you had one of those? I'm sure you have. One only needs to be uh, versed, in, read a little bit, really, in science to find mystery and awe. But it, it's, it's current all the time. I mean, only a few weeks ago, maybe it was months, there was NASA claims to have found half a dozen new Earth-sized planets that can sustain life as we know it sure. somewhere nowhere near us. Nowhere. And, and one could sit and think, well, what if there was to be evolved species like us there? What is our relationship to them in, in the grand scheme of things? Sure. You know, it makes you wonder. Sure, uh, and of course, as a theologian, I would ask, is Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior too? It's an obvious uh, question. Are they, are they worshiping the same God, you know? It's, and it's, it, it has to, it's a question that has to get asked. Yes, yes, right? but, and, but, but the answers are mystery in many it ways. It'll be a while. I mean, even the Big Bang, which science tells us. Sure. That I, it, to, to the extent of the use, believe, I believe it did happen about 13.7 billion years ago. Uh -huh. the, well, who banged the evidence. It? Well, what happened before that? What, what happened before that? What does exactly. it mean to ask the question before that? <laughs> indeed, indeed. Uh, and there's all kinds of things. And I mean, then, you, then you get into infinity, because if you get to the end of the last star, the last galaxy, you say, oh, what's the far side of that? Yeah. So you have to think infinity. So we're both brought to our knees. Uh, Mike, are there particular spiritual uh, authors or practices or resources that you draw upon uh, to sustain your life in faith and science? Maybe not practices or authors, although you could call these authors. I have three aunts that are Marist sisters, retired, and I visit them as often as I can in Ireland and England. And we have some discussions of about course. nature, and, and they're, they're very inquisitive. They loved when I once said that the more I know, the more I realize how little I know. And we discussed that a lot. Yes. And I also take inspiration from my late grandmother, who was the most religious person I know, but I, I couldn't find fault with any of her deep religious 
beliefs. So and I'm sure a person of great quality of life and integrity, and that's of course the real test of any faith, the life, the life we live. So it's beautiful to have such such family saints. Yeah, they are. They are know, to us. That uh, can model. We that do great. revere them. You do revere <laughs> them, and and someday, of course, you'll pray to them, because they'll be praying for you. Mike, a last question: as we as we move to celebrate Easter, and of course, having come through Good Friday. Um, I often wonder if there is a physical reality that reflects a Good Friday and an Easter hope. Uh, in other words, uh, is creation constantly dying and rising? Is this the cycle of, uh, of reality? Uh, and, and I suppose my question, my ultimate question is, where do you find or can we find signs of Easter hope uh, in the midst of God's creation and in your own study? of it well i i find no matter how i think about it no much empirical evidence i have the mere the mystery of life itself to to me is i mean I, i'm amazed every time a plane gets off the ground but on a much longer i'm longer, amazed every time it lands safely <laughs> <laughs> i love that to her too but you know we can we can we can step aside and define what what is life what are the requirements of life you know self-replication and stuff and now people have been able to assemble DNA components that will replicate themselves, but I don't think even they call that life. Yeah. Those things die like life does, but uh, there's a, there's a, in that sense, there's a gap between how scientists understand life and how uh, emotionally and, and mentally all of us can think about life and, and rebirth and dying. So they're not an easy question to answer, yeah. um, but it certainly can make one wonder a lot about sure. uh, the cycle of life. Indeed, indeed. And, and I suppose within it to find the seed, the seed of hope and the seed of new life. Uh, Mike, this has been a marvelous conversation. Thank you so much. You're and very blessings welcome. and to you and your family, a blessed Easter. Happy Easter to yourself as well.